Bottle feed a piglet while enjoying fine cuisine. That was the gimmick of the old Lutenki Bouf, which became the center of one of Montreal's most notable crimes of the 1950s. I'm Christian, author of uh, Montreal 375 Tales, which tells the stories of Montreal's most notable bars, restaurants, hotels, and venues. It began around 1897 as Onesim Maccabee opened a grocery store downstairs from his home near De Carrière and St. Hubert. He was killed at age 69 in 1912 when a tram hit his car on St. Denis. His son Joseph took over and moved the operation across the tracks to Rester and St. Grégoire in the 1930s using a name giving tribute to a hungry pixie fairy from France. It was a remote spot and he compensated by offering a decor of original oil paintings, a 1,000 square foot mirror, the largest in Canada, with plenty of opera singers. It was Canada's only opera restaurant, and uh, Roger Doucette and Géraldine Doucette sang there before uh, later gaining some fame. And of course, a roving photographer offered diners photos of themselves with piglets. By the 1950s, Joseph Maccabee's son Bert took over and became the focus of thieves, two of whom were nabbed after a car chase with police. Then, on 19 January 1953, at 2 a.m., Bert McCabe, now aged 59, who lived upstairs, received a phone call from a Dr. Robinson claiming his wife had forgotten her purse in the bathroom and he arranged to come by and pick it up. Four men, one dressed as a woman, burst in, but McCabe had a gun in hand just in case. McCabe was overpowered, but he shot a bullet into the TV in the process. The thugs beat him and tied him up alongside assistant Margot Drouin. The thieves left with a safe and a diamond ring that they ripped off a finger. The safe contained between $700 and $4,000, depending on various media accounts. <clears throat> Maccabe seemed fine, but died three days later in hospital. Gertrude Servan, a femme fatale criminal, shopped around for someone who could open the safe. Police questioned her at length, but she didn't crack. Police investigator Henry Bond had no other leads until Jonathan Don, a 6'5", 22-year-old former private investigator, was arrested fighting in California. His prints matched the crime scene, and police sent him back to Montreal. Don confessed and named his accomplices, Roy Colligan and Gertrude Servant's brother, Leo, are collared. Gang leader Gerald McEwen, 33, was charming, seductive, and handsome, with five scars on his body, three from police bullets, remained missing. But after months of wiretapping McEwen's father's phone in Bradley Beach, New Jersey, cops finally caught wind that McEwen was living in Austin, Texas with a good job and a new wife from Germany. The whole gang went on trial and defense attorneys noted that the victim, Bert McCabe, had heart trouble and had been operated for a brain tumor just days before the robbery. The gang was sentenced to life in prison but served only seven years. Gertrude Servant only got seven years but had to serve out her full sentence. Shareholders took over the restaurant, and by the 1970s, they included Jack Rubin and Dave Radler, who ran in the same circles as media mogul Conrad Black. About 30 diners had to flee from their meals on September 27, 1973, when the place went up in flames with much priceless artwork gone forever. The landmark building, with its turrets and mansards, was demolished and replaced by a car dealership.